Hello, I'm Emma Gray. I'm a critical care paramedic at Thames Valley Air Ambulance. I'm here today to tell you about all of the equipment that we carry on all of our vehicles, including the aircraft as well as our response cars. So this is what we call our secondary response bag. Um, if we, there are two of us on the vehicle, um, both of these bags will definitely be going to the incident. Um, in the top, we have another drugs bag, but this is the one we call um, our secondary drugs bag, or basically it's more rarely used drugs. Um, so those that we use less often and maybe are not quite as urgently required as the ones in the primary bag. And this is probably the one that's responsible for the extra weight in this bag. Uh, this is the ventilator. Um, so if we have given a patient a general anaesthetic um, or they are in cardiac arrest, we can ventilate them. Um, instead of using that BVM from the other bag, um, which we would start off with manually, we can then attach them up to the machine and apply the appropriate settings for that patient. Um, and then this will continue to ventilate them on oxygen um, throughout the time we're with that patient. Again, that then frees us up to do everything else that still needs doing. So in the main body of the bag, um, we carry an emergency airway bag. Uh, we've also got a spare one of these in the vehicle itself. Um, in here, we have all the equipment that we require um, to intubate a patient, um, or um, if they just require an eye gel, um, and all of the equipment to make sure that that is done safely uh, and properly, or if we need to give a surgical airway, that equipment is also carried in here. In here we have a portable suction. We do carry another um, larger suction in the car. This is our secondary um, because we need to make sure that we always have a working suction unit with us. So it's a basically a backup. Uh, in here, this is what's called hypertonic saline. Uh, this is something that we give to people who have had a significant head injury. Uh, and we believe that there is a quite raised intracranial pressure going on in the brain, in the head. Um, and this can help counteract that. Okay, so this piece of equipment uh, is called a pump. Um, what we can do is put a syringe of the drugs that we're going to use to keep somebody asleep um, in here and set a setting on here so that we can give exactly the right dose over a long period of time. So over the transfer, we can make sure that they have exactly the right amount of medication to keep them asleep. Um, again, whilst we're busy doing everything else, then this is really helpful to maintain that anesthesia. So this is our ultrasound machine. It's very similar to ones that are used in hospital, but this is the portable version. So this is the probe, uh, and then we attach this to an iPad that we carry. And this is used um, on patients where we're concerned that there may, there may be bleeding internally. So we can look at um, the patient's internal organs, all of the internal organs, and see if we can see any fluid that shouldn't be there um, that would let us know that they are bleeding. Um, it can also be used in cardiac arrest. The ultrasound will show us that that heart is beating um, and how effectively it is beating um, or not. So in this side pouch, we carry fluids and um, glucose. So if somebody's blood sugar levels, levels are dangerously low, then that glucose can really help. And there are our giving sets that we uh, feed that through. At the bottom, We've got a manual blood pressure cuff. Uh, we usually take blood pressures for patients on our monitor. Um, however, like anything, there's always a chance something can fail when it's electronic. So it's very useful to have a backup manual blood pressure cuff. In the top part, we've got something called epistats and bite blocks. So sometimes people with facial injuries can have real difficulty, uh, or we can have real difficulty stopping that bleeding. So somebody can be bleeding very heavily out of the nose or from the mouth from facial fractures. So a way of managing that is these epistats have got little balloons that we inflate. So they go up the patient's nose, we inflate the cuff, or it could be a wound that's going into the neck. That's also very difficult to stop that bleeding. We inflate the cuff and that, that will stop um, the bleeding. And then bite blocks, if um, a patient's had several fractures to the face and that's caused a lot of bleeding and they can that can Real, cause real issues with their airway if the blood is going down. Um, bite blocks can help put everything back into the position it should be and therefore stopping the bleeding. Mm -hmm.